At the 2025 edition of the MSPO Defense Exhibition, Saab made headlines with the presentation of its ground-launched small-diameter bomb, a system that demonstrates how traditional rocket artillery can be reimagined to meet modern battlefield requirements. Developed in cooperation with Boeing, the GLSDB combines the widely used GBU-39 small-diameter bomb with a rocket booster, producing a hybrid weapon capable of striking targets up to 150 kilometers away. This effectively extends the reach of launchers such as the M270 MLRS and M142 HIMARS, nearly doubling their effective range compared to conventional GMLRS rockets. Saab's message at the event was clear, artillery systems that militaries already operate can be transformed into long-range precision platforms without the need for entirely new launchers. The GLSDB represents more than just an incremental increase in range. Its design offers features that traditional ballistic rockets cannot match. Once the bomb separates from its booster at altitude, it deploys wings and transitions into a glide phase, enabling it to maneuver in flight. This allows the weapon to approach its target from unexpected directions, including the ability to strike targets located behind the launcher, a capability that significantly complicates enemy defenses. With precision claimed at around 1 meter, and with guidance supported by GPS-aided inertial navigation resistant to jamming, the GLSDB offers accuracy on par with some of the most advanced precision-guided munitions currently in service. Programmable electronic fuses expand its flexibility, allowing for direct impact, airburst detonation, or delayed penetration against hardened structures. At MSPO 2025, Saab demonstrated just how versatile the system can be by displaying a truck-mounted mock-up equipped with a 12-tube container launcher. This concept illustrates that the GLSDB can be adapted to a wide range of platforms beyond the established MLRS and HIMARS. It is compatible with South Korea's Chunmu rocket system, and even containerized launchers designed to look like standard shipping containers, which can be deployed on land or at sea. Such flexibility opens the door to concealed operations, dispersed deployment, and even naval applications, giving armed forces more options for integrating long-range precision strike capabilities into their arsenals. The system also allows for multiple rounds to be launched in rapid succession, hitting separate targets nearly simultaneously and overwhelming adversary defenses. The system has not remained a mere prototype or demonstration. Ukraine became the first country to employ the GLSDB in combat following deliveries from the United States. The weapon was used against Russian positions beginning in early 2024, with the first confirmed fragments discovered near Kremina in Luhansk. Reports from the battlefield, however, indicated that the initial version suffered from reduced effectiveness due to Russian electronic warfare which disrupted satellite navigation and degraded accuracy. While the airdrop small-diameter bomb fared better under the same conditions, the ground-launched variant's predictable glide path and longer exposure to countermeasures made it more vulnerable. Saab and Boeing responded by enhancing the system's resistance to jamming, reinforcing its connections, and adapting its electronics. By March 2025, Improved GLSDB rounds were shipped again to Ukraine, with reports suggesting that the latest versions achieved boost phase speeds of up to Mach 5 while maintaining precision despite electronic interference. Ukraine's use of the GLSDB has effectively served as a real world testbed, shaping further refinements to ensure the weapon's relevance against technologically capable adversaries. Industrial development has played a critical role in the program's sustainability. For years, the GLSDB relied on surplus M26 rocket motors, of which hundreds of thousands have been produced during the Cold War. While this approach kept costs low by recycling existing stockpiles, it was ultimately not a sustainable long-term solution since M26 production ceased in 2001. Saab addressed this limitation in June 2025 by selecting Enduro rocket motor systems as its new propulsion supplier. 
Endural announced a $75 million expansion of its McHenry facility in Mississippi, bolstered by a $14.3 million award under the U.S. Defense Production Act. Starting in 2026, the company aims to produce up to 6,000 new rocket motors annually using advanced processes such as single-piece flow assembly and bladeless high-speed mixing. The acquisition of Adranos in 2023 also provided access to Alatech propellant technology, offering more efficient performance compared to legacy formulations. Saab is simultaneously establishing a dedicated GLSDB production line in Grayling, Michigan, ensuring that the program will transition from reliance on aging stockpiles to sustainable industrial production. One of the most compelling aspects of the GLSDB is its cost effectiveness. Modern long range precision strike weapons such as the Atoms or Storm Shadow cruise missile are formidable but they also come with price tags exceeding $1 million and $2.5 million per unit respectively. By contrast, the GLSDB achieves its extended range and accuracy at a fraction of the cost. The small diameter bomb itself is priced at around $40,000, and when combined with surplus or newly produced rocket motors, the overall system remains significantly cheaper than competing options. This affordability allows militaries to employ GLSDB in scenarios where using a high-value strategic missile would be disproportionate. Although the warhead is smaller than those carried by Atoms or cruise missiles, at 93 kg it is sufficient for a wide range of targets, from command centers and air defense sites to ammunition depots and fortified bunkers. Its ability to penetrate over 90 centimeters of reinforced concrete further enhances its credibility as a cost-effective strike option. The development path of the GLSDB has been long, with early demonstrations dating back to 2015. Those initial trials showcased the system's ability to conduct 360-degree attack profiles, circling back to strike targets even behind the launcher. In 2017, Testing validated its capability to destroy moving targets at 100 km using semi-active laser guidance. A 2019 trial at Norway's Andoya Test Center confirmed the weapon's effectiveness against a sea-based target at 130 km. Each of these steps demonstrated the adaptability and maneuverability that set the GLSDB apart from conventional ballistic munitions. Unlike traditional rockets that follow predictable parabolic trajectories, the GLSDB's ability to glide, maneuver, and adjust its path gives it a significant tactical advantage against defended targets. What Saab and Boeing have achieved with the GLSDB is a redefinition of how armed forces can extend the utility of existing artillery platforms. Instead of developing entirely new systems, militaries can now upgrade their rocket launchers with a precision strike capability that reaches nearly twice as far as before. This approach saves resources, accelerates fielding, and allows commanders to employ a flexible mix of weapons depending on the situation. A salvo of GLSDBs may be used to suppress air defense radars ahead of a larger strike, or to destroy logistical nodes deep behind enemy lines, all while costing a fraction of the price of heavier long-range missiles. The appearance of the GLSDB at MSPO 2025 highlights how the system has matured from an experimental concept into an operational capability with global relevance. Its use in Ukraine, ongoing industrial investments, and compatibility with multiple launcher platforms indicate that the weapon will likely become a staple of modern artillery arsenals. By offering extended reach, precision, adaptability, and affordability, the GLSDB strengthens the argument that the future of long-range strike will not be defined solely by high-cost, high-yield missiles, but also by cost-effective precision munitions that can be deployed in large numbers. Saab's vision is that the GLSDB will act as a force multiplier, ensuring that existing artillery systems remain relevant in a battlefield increasingly shaped by electronic warfare, long-range engagements, and the need for flexible strike options.